Hey guys, it's Luke, and as a way to celebrate getting 1K subscribers, we're gonna do the same thing I did for celebrating getting 500 subscribers, which is a video compilation of my favorite moments from videos I've made. This is gonna go from the Rush Hour video to the Trolls video, and just to be clear, I'm not gonna include the Princess of the Frog video because that was a remake, and I already included my favorite one in the other video. And also for the video of me saying myself, I'm including it and including one part from both segments. Okay, enjoy everyone. They both survived this without any long-term injury, which is a miracle. Eh, don't think that's an applies to Jackie Chan, my dude. Jim Carrey is so talented at physical comedy that it's downright sinful. Wait, so you say that Jim Carrey's comedy is sinful, but you remove a sin here? Is it sinful or not? Can't be both. I guess it's technically still an Easter egg, even if they just tilt up and show it to you. Well, considering that the Pizza Planet truck has appeared in every Pixar film except for The Incredibles, yes, it technically still is an Easter egg. And on top of that, there have been instances in other Pixar movies where the Pizza Planet truck only appears for just a few seconds. Holy sh! those pies are still steaming right out of the oven! How has Horner not melted his plum thumb plum off? Probably because that wouldn't actually happen. How did Buddy find the keys when he didn't even need to know to look for them in the first place? And those keys ended up floating to the surface, nowhere near where the truck crashed in. Oh, f*** it. Um, his name is Snowball, not Buddy. This is Buddy. Yes, I am Ash. Ash Ketchum is a boy from Pallet Town. Double narration. It's actually triple narration. Ash, the narrator, and the narrator for the TV. Okay, this sin removal goes out to the movie acknowledging every kid and adult that snuck around the house for some well-earned gaming time, only to wake the entire damn house because the TV magically jacks up the volume whenever you turn it on after midnight. It's nice to be seen. Actually, that was the PS1 startup sound, and I'll play both sounds so that you know which is which. Also, this is the second major music competition in this movie. And while it's not the movie's fault, the Pitch Perfect series has really worn me out on that kind of thing as a plot device. Admits it's not the movie's fault, sends the movie for it anyway. You ruined my wedding! So Bowser has now forgotten about the Power Star he just stopped Mario from getting. And that will definitely be important later when they are fighting and maybe Mario or Luigi stumbles on it and gets invincible and wins the day. That will be fulfilling for stupid people and children. Stupid children. Well, Bowser forgot about the star because he's angry at Mario for supposedly ruining his wedding. Also, it's fine if you don't like this movie, but that doesn't give you a right to call people who like both this movie and the Mario games stupid. Well, nothing justifies striking another student. Except for the fact that he was defending another student, this gets 1,000 sins. Okay, I'll respond to this sin by reading this comment from Doe 82. Honestly, nothing does justify striking another student. He may have been defending someone he cared about, but he sure as hell did not go about it in the proper way. I think Mr. Tushman was completely valid in this scene, and the punishment given to Jack Will was very fair. Violence should not just be tolerated because someone had the right intentions. No hate to your video, but I think those sins were unfairly given, to be honest. How does a machine like this work underwater? It seems to run on electricity and I just can't. Look, I get that this is SpongeBob and it's all ridiculous, but this is what I do. Blame me all you like, but you're the one who invited the dominatrix into the hardware store. Don't look surprised when I find creative ways to use the Allen wrench. Well, this is just something the episode doesn't need to explain here. And I love how you admit this is SpongeBob, but then you constantly question its logic. A stinky mud puddle to you and me. Nara Sean. And get used to it, because the French narrator is a recurring character in this series. That's what you get for not having hands. Ouch. Stop what you're doing, and stop Spider-Man. I own you Miles! Miles Morales! Yeah, this confusion is on you, asshole. What did you expect saying stop Spider-Man would get you? Uh, you got the Spanish wrong here, Jer. What Miguel said was I own you, not I own you. Huh? I can only assume your disbelief is that a man could be suspended upside down like that for any extended length of time and survive. I'm pretty sure Eggs' reaction was more towards the fact that he doesn't know who Herbert is and he has yet to learn that he's his biological father. 
The ocean will always need a kraken. And a kraken will always answer the call. Unless poor word of mouth results in no one coming to see their movie. In which case, the call will kind of just get forgotten about. Well, the fact that this movie bombed doesn't mean it's bad. And I think it's a great movie, though far from DreamWorks Best. And for another example, that can also apply to the three Pixar movies that went straight to Disney Plus and are finally getting theater treatment. I love all three. Evan's right here. And free! On the one hand, I'm glad that this movie isn't portraying horny 8th grade boys panting over girls, but on the other, I think just avoiding this behavior in a movie altogether is wise. Well, this is a coming-of-age story, and also part of May's character is that she likes boys. That's a good point, but if you played the rest of the scene, you would have found an additional thing to point out. Does it matter what gender is on screen right now, and the message to the impressionable is that talking about a person's appeal based on convenience and cost is pretty fucking creepy? Yeah, he left that swear uncensored, which happens again in the video, which you also missed. Storing your merchandise where you shit! Yup, another uncensored swear, so I'll be adding two sins to both of the sin counters here. But before I do, I'd like to thank Gabriel Ortiz for pointing this out to me. On this jump, you can see that Mei Mei leaves her ceremonial robe behind when she transforms. And that's a nice thematic touch and all, but I now have questions about how far off clothing must be before it leaves the magical modesty zone of transforming with Mei Mei. Like, is it points of contact? How does this impact her glasses? If the glasses are jostling off her face a bit during transformation, do they not transform with her? And does that mean Panda Mei can't see? Firstly, Mei has been shown to be able to see as a red panda the whole movie, so that would mean her glasses do transform with her. And secondly, as shown by that part, she moved away from the robe when she transformed, which is why it was left behind by her. Ending your film by admitting it was just fine. Uh, Jeremy, that's not the word fine. It's fine, which means end in Italian. 100 years of Disney bullshit in the credits. Well, showing all these characters in the credits are a good way to commemorate 100 years of Disney. But more importantly, the real sin for the credits is that they forgot to include a character from both Meet the Robinsons and the Rescuers. Just get my worthless scullery made to get another place setting ready for the lovely lady... Clitter Sparkles. Crystal only introduced Bridget as his plus one, so the only way Chef could know her name is if the screenwriters were committed to seeing Christine Berensky chew the hell out of this line. Except that's not true, because when he introduced her to Chef in this same scene, he said, Meet the lovely Lady Glitter Sparkles. So, that's where we've gotten so far, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice day, and be up for more videos, both Sins videos and videos that are non-Sins, and I've got ideas for those.